Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Spin High, Spin Low for early years. So if you're four, five, or six, or around that age of attainment, then this is for you. You will need a grown up with you for some of it, for sure. And we need, these are the things that we need to get. So I'm doing this, these lives. I'm, my name is Caroline, I'm from Bubbly Maths. And I'm doing these lives for a, an organization called AIMSEC. And the, the activities are on their website, which is called Amy High. And they, what they do is they help children in Africa that live in, in villages, in the middle of nowhere, in the country, and in townships and rural, in, in disadvantaged areas. So by doing these activities, you're also helping these children because the more people that use the activities, the, the better it is for AIMSEC. And then the, the way they help them is by they provide professional development. That means the teachers that teach those children get better at teaching maths, which means those children can have a better chance in life. And you are helping by playing these games. Now, if I'm very, very lucky, I'm going to be able to share this live on, and I said very lucky, and I did mean very lucky because it's a bit of hit and miss here. Sometimes it works, I've got my, sometimes it works, oh, there we go. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Let's see if we can if it'll work today. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, oh, I think we might be able to do it. It didn't work earlier. Ooh, ooh, it might work. What do you think? I think we're going to be able to make it happen. Well, that's all right. Start watch party. Let's see if it works. If it does, that's great because we can say if anybody of you are watching on the watch party, then I can. There we go. I can say hello that way. That's great. Oh, no, we don't want to hear you. you don't hear me. <laughs> you have to hear me. You don't have to hear me on there. Fantastic. So now what we're going to do, we're going to need going to now share with the visualizer. Share with the visualizer, something like that. It's not what I want. I want this here. Share screen. I'm going to share my screen with you. And what we're going to look at is here. Oh, not that one, this one. Share, that's it. And what we need is we need a pair of scissors and a grown up. No scissors without grown ups. If you have a D10, if anybody in your house does gaming and they let you use it, then you can use a D10. It's got 10 faces. It's a dice with 10 faces. That's not essential, that's just a bit extra. We need some strips of cardboard. We're going to make something like rulers, but they're not going to be exactly the same as rulers. But these are number lines, and we're going to make another one of these, and we'll talk about those in a moment. And we need a ruler to make the number lines. We need some paper, we need a pen to draw with. And then also, if you can get some a grown up to print out the, the link, the link to the act Activity on Amy High is in the description above. You can get someone to print that out while you're doing this and print out something like this. And then we can play this game, get a paper clip. What you do is you open out the paper clip like this. Or you can use a bit of wire as well. This is them. Cable tie, some rigid wire that you might have somewhere under the sink or something. You get a pencil, stab it into the whoopsie, and you can spin it round and get your numbers by spinning it round. That's another way to get numbers. But what we're going to use today, that all the instructions for that are on the resource. What we're going to use today is we're going to use numbers in a hat. So to make these numbers, I like to find if when I find white card, if a parcel arrives with white card or a find one in the in the shop in the shop if there's a box that's becoming empty i'll ask them can i please take this box and then i've got cards i can put a number on one side 
and dots on the other, or I can just use them for different things and they're much nicer than they, but you can do this on a piece of paper. It's just that it's really nice if you've got this card and these are lasting me for ages. And I put those in the hat, so the numbers here are zero to nine. All the numbers from zero to nine. And just make sure we know that's nine. Put a line into there. And then you like it a bit curvy. Zero to nine. Okay, now. First thing we're going to do very, very quickly is learn how to make a number line. So we're going, we're making these number lines. Some of you might be awfully little and might not even, might be working on counting all the way to 10. But as you, but since we're, this is for four, five and six year olds, the older you get, the closer you get to 100. And you can also go minus numbers if you want, but we're just going to start with plus 10 numbers. You can add them on afterwards. So we've got one that's zero or a nine to 10 and then 10 to 20. And then I've put all the numbers on here, 20 to 30. So once you, once you know your numbers to 10, then you can add on the numbers to 20 and keep working on those up and down till you've got them all. And then you can join the two together. When you're ready to go past 20, join the two together and go all the way to 40 and keep making these number number lines. You don't have to make them all at once. If you don't, you're only working on your numbers up to 10, you don't need to do them all at once. But the way I did these, I actually used the inches on here because I wanted them nice and big and that's the way it worked out for me. So I just marked them and then get that with the... This is going to go from 40 to 60. You just mark them here. I've got nice big chunky bits. You could use centimeters on a, the other side so that each one of these notches is also a centimeter, which you don't need to know about yet, but you could get familiar with it. You could use centimeters, in which case you could also use your number lines as rulers. And that means that this would be a little bit shorter. This would be this long instead of that long. I just wanted to make them a little bit bigger. So this goes to here, we can push those down, we can finish that later. And this starts at 40, that's 50, that's 60, and then you number all the little ones and you can just go ahead and do that. So that's how I do the number lines. We're only going to be working with number line 20 today. And we're going to start with the youngest learners. We're going to work our way up. Start with the youngest learners. I hope I'm actually sharing the screen. Please tell me I'm sharing. I am. Ooh. Okay, it has happened before that I'm not actually sharing the screen. Oh, yes, I can see it on there. Phew. Ah, really. Right, I can see we've got a couple of people watching. Thank you for joining us. I can't see who you are at this point. So please do say hello. Give us a wave um, if you want us to say hello. So for early years, we're going to start with got these numbers in the hat and on each of these numbers I have on the back there's the same amount of dots but whatever the number is worth that's how many dots there are on the back. Let me see what's on the back of this one. Oh there's nothing on the back of that one. Did you see what number it was? Ooh, ooh, oh, ooh. It says zero. Zero means you have nothing. If you have zero, you have nothing. If you have eaten all your sweets, you have zero sweets. So we're going to take one out of here and we're going to see, we're going to each take one out. So there's going to be three of us playing, let's say. I'm going to take out, this is for Mac. Mac gets a two. Joe gets a one and I get a, oh my goodness, a nine. So who has the largest number? Now, if you're working with a learner that's still working to five, five, then just use five numbers. Get used to five first. Now let's see which is worth. First of all, we can put them on the number line. We can put one goes there, two goes there, nine goes there and the numbers 
uh, get bigger as you go up the number line. From zero going up, the numbers get bigger. So which number is biggest? Which number is smallest? And which is the number that's in the middle? Is it right in the middle or is it closer to one or nine? All these questions are really great questions. And then if you want to be sure, you can go on the back and count how many dots? One dot. How many dots? One, two dots. And that way you get the reinforcement of the symbol two, but saying the word two and the number of dots. So you get a meaning, a value, a sense of the size of the number two, the, the two-ness of two. And then the number nine and count, and count the dots nice and slowly and then count all the way up the number line to make sure that you're in the right place. But this takes time. Some children, not very many, pick it up super quick. But even if they pick it up super quick, it's worth repeating as a game on a regular basis because if there are any misconceptions you will they will be sorted they'll be sorted if you if you just keep playing the game like this way and or you can play it with bowls you can use the quantity of anything you can count out you can count out paper clips you want to count see how many dots there are you can count one two three nice and slow four five six seven, eight, nine, I've got all kinds of things I can count here. Find yourself your favorite things to count. Count dinosaurs, count lols, count whatever, use whatever your young person, your young learner loves to use. Let them choose. Yesterday, the day before, this family was sorting with dinosaurs. How many different ways could they get the dinosaurs to sit next to each other so that they were never, never in the same order? They're using dinosaurs, it's perfect. So that's the first game you can play. Now the next game would be going up to 20. Now that we, we, can, we can play the same game going up to 20, um, not quite the same game. We can, we're still using the number line. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a box, two boxes. I say we're going up to 20, but for this one, you have to have a, a zero and a one always on this first one. So this is a very, very simple game. It's a zero and a one. You've got to have those out or an extra one, probably get an extra one of those two. And so, we, or, or simply choose or start at the beginning, just say, choose which one. Should we put zero or one in this box? And I'm going to say one because we've already done zero. Or you can play the game where you always have a one in there. So whatever number you get, it's going to be 10 or over. And so now we're going to again pick up the hat. So, okay. Mac has seven. Joe has two. And I have six. So who has the biggest number? It's going to go in here, which means it's more than 10. That one there, means you have one 10. So that's one 10. If you had two there, you'd have two 10s, which takes you there. And you can just move it up. You ready? Now, let's see. What number does Matt have? Let's write them out, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and then the last one is 20. So what number does Matt have? Matt has one and a seven. That's more than 10, so it's got, it's got one in the text, it means 10. So up to 10, there is no one in front. But after 10, there's a one in front. So every number that's more than 10, it's along there. So Matt is here at 17. First of all, decide which who has the biggest number. Now Josephine has one and two, so that's 10, 11, 12. And I got, Caroline got one and six, 16. 16 because there's a 10 in front. 
the nine goes there. And then you can take 10 and then add on, if you want, 10, 11, 12. So that, um, that was Josephine, I think. And then Caroline got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And who got most? That's uh, Josephine, I think I forget. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So you've got most there and you can write out the number. So who got most? It was the number 17 got most and you can write it in there. So, and you can keep playing that game and see if you can get the largest number. Now, if you're going to use all the numbers, you can just use two, again, two boxes. Use all the numbers and you can get all your number lines in a row. Or you can limit it you can decide if it's going to be zero, one, or two, or three, or four, as you get familiar. At the moment, my grandson is still working up to 20, but sometimes he likes to stretch. So we're playing games where we're playing um, with darts and things where he has a two and a one, and he's learning that two and a one is 21. But which number comes first? So two, that means it's working. We're looking at the, the, the value of it. We're still calling it a two and a one. So we're still working on our, our up to 20s, but he also likes to stretch it. So we go where he wants to go. And let's see what we've got. Now we've got to have two numbers. That number and that number. That's the first person's number. Oh my goodness. Which number makes this bigger? If we're going for the biggest number, two a bigger number or is 20 a bigger number? Well, you can look at it on your number line. Two is there. There's no value. It's less than 10 because that's a 10, one is a zero. So it's there. Whereas if we did it the other way around, that's worth 10 and that's worth that single unit. So the unit is zero, so it has no units. That's two and zero, so that's 20. And 20 is here, so which is worth more, 2 or 20, which is a bigger number? You can decide which is a bigger number, so that's the number you're choosing. And that's, let's pull back my, my number, because I think we're going to lose that one. That's mine, mine's 20. And now I'm going to get two more. We could choose them separately and put them back in. So, oh, that's going to be a big one, that's a 9. Put the nine there, and it was just just do them, yeah, just be two like that. It's never going to be the same. And a three. So which one's going to be bigger? Ninety-three or thirty-nine? And you can use your number line to see which one's going to be bigger. So, so which one's going to be bigger? I'm going to write ninety-three. You play the game and let the learner work it out. So which one's going to be bigger? And then the last one. Oh my goodness! Is what is the chances that it's going to be less? more than 93 is there any chance that this person has any chance of winning now there's a chance they could win let's see if we if we're lucky see what happens oh well that's okay now now that we pulled out a zero okay if you're six you might be able to work out that what is the chances of that person winning oh my goodness oh look at that we've got 20 again or 0 to again decide which one is the one so who when you can get your numbers line out you control the size of the numbers according to who is learning okay that's for that's about it i think you've done it all get your number lines out and i like these nice chunky number lines you can actually move them you can move them around you can take them put them on the floor not a big long one you can use as many as you need to use and you can extend them the other way if you do any if it goes the other way below zero you can also make some more and go below zero and then you can keep all your number lines like this or you can stick them up on the wall or you can have both one that you can move around and carry around and really get physical with or you could and to and have one on the wall so you can go up and, and press things out on the wall another great way of doing the number line is using pegs and clothes pins and a shopping a shopping line 
laundry line, a piece of string, and have pegs and and on that and have the different numbers in the different places on the laundry line. Oh, oh my goodness, we do have we do have some lovely people. Barry Roberts, hello, Eddie Ferrero, hello, Aileen, hi, Tony Beard and Tony Beard and writes all these resources. So give Tony a big hello. I'm going to send her away uh, because she's the one that puts in much more work than I do on these. I, my job is to make more and more videos for the website. So talking about which, if you do, and, and oh, sorry, let me say hello to Russell. If you are enjoying these videos, please do share them. Tell your grown-ups to share them so other children can see them too. And, and also if you like the, oh, let me just stop the share. If you, hello, if you um, get your grown-ups to maybe put a post on, the post on Facebook with the, with the group so that to tell other grown-ups about it with a link to the group. And if you are on YouTube, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. So there's the Maths Boys YouTube channel, which is where I'm creating all the videos slowly, but surely, um, so that there's lots of games on there that you can play. And then there's the Bubbly Maths YouTube channel where all these lives are being uploaded as they are, kind of as they are. So it's a bit, a bit of potluck sometimes, because sometimes things don't work very well for me. And um, then remember, if you want a little magic moment, you go to the AIMSEC Facebook page and there's lots of little links down below with little pictures. And some of them, you can, there'll be ideas for, some of them you'll be able to choose for you if you're four or five or six. And there's also going to be a special place for you to go on the YouTube as well. That's always going to be a set cool down playlist that's going to be for four and five and six year, six year olds so if you subscribe to that then you'll see when those come up or you see your grown-ups will see when they come up there'll be more and more and more and please do see see you now next sunday morning i'm not going to be doing a live but we'll be playing something um a, um, a pre-recorded something on the sunday morning so please do if you just like youtube where well, you come in and you'll watch something that i've done previously and then, because because I think I need one morning off a week, I think that's, do you think that's a good idea? Or do you think I should just work every single morning, every single day? Yeah, you might be right, but I'm not going to. I'm going to have a little bit of a rest on Sunday mornings. And then there will be some days when we're playing replays. So there's some days when I won't, um, I'm going to start going out again. So some days it will be replays and there'll be something fun for you to do. Every morning at 10 o'clock, there'll be something fun to you to do. And that's 10 o'clock London time. At 9 o'clock, tell if you have any older um, siblings or other, other older learners in your home, please tell them 9 o'clock London time. So I know that's 10 o'clock South Africa time at the moment, and it's 10 o'clock in Western Europe. Everywhere else, you'll have to just work it out. Time and date, timeanddate.com or datingtime.com. And then also... In the evening, eight o'clock in the evening, and that you can do on the replay. It's telling you what you need for the following day. So if you need scissors, or if you need cardboard, or if you need a pen, or if you need paper, it'll tell you what you need the night before and, and give you your instructions and give you grown ups and give you grown ups to look at and get get ready for doing the live the following day or the activity the following day. Thank you so much for joining. Let's see if we had anybody else. No, nobody else has joined us. So thank you very much for joining us and I will see you on the next, well, eight o'clock tonight and then for you, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll see you then. Thank you very much for joining.